Hello everyone, hope you're having a good week so far. Well, today we're going to continue our look at the Hammer Mummy movies with The Curse of the Mummy's Tomb. Mwahahaha. <laughs> so, without further ado, a here, a we go. Egypt in the year 1900. A mummy is discovered by three Egyptologists, Englishman John Bray and Sir Giles Dal... Darlimpole as well as French Professor Eugene Dubois. Assisting the, in the expedition is Professor Dubois' daughter and Bray's fiancée, Annette, herself an Egyptology expert. All the artifacts are brought back to London by the project's backer, American showman Alexander King, who plans to recoup his investment by staging Lord Lee's sensational public exhibits of the Egyptian treasures. Soon after arrival, however, the mummy revives and starts to kill various members of the expedition. Well, it becomes evident that Sinister Adam Beechup, or Boatchamp, or Beach, or Beecham actually, and with the arts patron who members of the expedition meet on the ship return to England, harbors a crucial revelation of the mummy's past and future. And that's pretty much the plot, I guess. So, anyway, yeah. Anyway, let's look at some production elements about this movie. Unlike most Hammer films of that period, it was filmed at Elstree Studios rather than the company's permanent home at Bray. With the exception of character actors Mike Ripper, Michael Ripper and George Pastel, director Carreras and designer Bernard Robinson, most of the cast and crew were not Hammer veterans. Female lead Jean Roland, in her screen debut, receives an introducing credit, but her voice is dubbed, by, but her voice is dubbed with one that emphasizes a probably thick French accent. Okay. The score is by Carlo M Martelli, but contains uncredited excerpts from Z. Korsakov's Shehez Saharazad, or however you pronounce it. Ivolidov Ivanov's procession of the Sardar and Franz Rezensi's music from music for Hammer's original mummy film. Because union rules in Britain decree that one person cannot be credited as a writer, okay, producer and director of a film, writer, producer, director Michael Carreras adopted the name Henry Younger for a screenplay, a deliberate analogy on the to the name John Elder, which was Hammer producer Anthony Hinn's writing pseudonym. Interesting. The novelization of the film was written by John Burke as part of his 1966 book, The Hammer Horror Film Omnibus. Hmm, nice. So yeah, there's really not much else I could say about this movie, so yeah. So overall, I give The Curse of the Mummy's Tomb two jack-o'-lanterns out of five. Well, join me tomorrow as we take a look at The Mummy's Shroud, and hopefully the plot will be a lot longer than that one. <laughs> anyway, so until tomorrow, peace.